Hey guys, Mike here from Messy Entertainment. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get started with UI Styles. So, when you've imported the asset, you'll have this UI Styles folder in your project. Uh, and then within that, we've got a change log documentation, which is pretty basic at the moment. It's, uh, it's going to be improved very soon. We've got a Google Design Guide, so if you're not a designer, check that out. It shows you what colors go with what nicely and stuff. You'll notice as well that our default color palette uses the colors that they recommend we got a link to our videos we got some demo data which is the color palette that I just mentioned we got some examples so the demo data and the examples can be deleted if you don't want them we've got some font and some images here so if you don't want them you can delete them uh, and the main thing that you definitely don't want to delete is this folder of scripts so just leave that alone um, the folder UI styles can be moved to a new directory if you wanted it to if you don't want it there if you want it in a different folder move it no worries uh, so let's get some uh, windows open UI styles so we've got a styles window this one this one can be docked uh, well they can both be docked and then we've got a color palette so by default this one's not dockable but you can go to their menu uh, when you've got some settings loaded and make it dockable so, right, we need some settings basically. If you look at both of them, they're saying we need to create some settings first. So, on the color palette, because the color palette is going to be looked at in its own video, so I'm just going to show you its settings now. Uh, so, if we go to load, you can see we've got uh, it's already found the default color palette. So, I'm going to load that in, and this is basically it here. Uh, and if we want to, if you're going to want to use that, because even if you don't want these colors, you can make categories so if you say if you had a color palette of say pastel sort of colors you just add a new category uh, and then you can just flip between them just like that so it's worth just keeping these google colors anyway really unless you just generally don't like them or you don't want them then do away with them but if you do want to keep them the best thing you can do is go to the asset so notice now that that's the loaded one if i click that it'll pin it in the project so we can go to it and then if we just duplicate it or uh, it's always good to duplicate it just in case you play about with it and change stuff and then you've already got that one there to fall back on but the reason we are taking this out of the uh, out of the UI styles folder so now I'm going to delete that I mean I'm going to load that sorry you can see it's found that one and if I had more you can see it's found the two that I got if I had more, it'd find them as well. You see, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so make sure that's loaded one. Yeah, uh, and the reason we don't want this one loaded, or at least we, if we did want it, we don't want it at that directory because that one's in the UI Styles folder. We don't really want any saved settings in there because when when I update UI Styles, um, we just want to delete this folder, and we don't want to delete anything that's you know our setting we don't want to delete our settings so right, I'm going to close this video uh, this window now because we're going to do that in a different video uh, and I'm going to do the same here I can either load some or create some I'm just going to create some from scratch I'm going to put them in the assets folder so that's that's pretty much all we need to do now we are set up and ready to create styles we've got this is our styles data in our project so and we can have as many of them as well if, if you go to load uh, we've got that one loaded if we was to have more of those it will find those when we go to load it so. right so again we've got the categories pretty similar to what I just showed you on the color palette you can have categories over here to um, better organize yourself and stuff but so let's just create a text a pre-made one and let's just say we want it to be called title so that's it, we've now got a style, it's already got a text component in, we can add as many as we want. Uh, we're going to look at that a bit further in just a second, but for now I'm just going to create a text component. I'm going to create a few of them as well because that's the idea of this asset. We'll edit loads at once. Uh, and that'll do. So how do we um, assign these to this style because obviously the moment it's not assigned to it so all we need basically is this find by name in its title so 
when we name this the first time, it sets the fine by name to the same as it, but we can delete, uh, call it something else if we want it. So if I was to copy that there like that, all I really need to do is open and close some brackets there, paste the fine by name in it, so the fine by name is is in there with brackets. And that just deleted it. But uh, another thing we can do is if I right click and then copy, it will copy it with the with the brackets already in there. Uh, another thing we can do is we can select the objects, right click it, add to selected objects. Uh, we can also get to that from the root here if we go find by, add to selected object, or we can copy it to clipboard there. Uh, but the, I think the, my favourite way is just to drag the components to it and then it'll sort it out for you and put it in there. Note as well if we had another style, uh, that one would have been fine, but let's just do another text one. Call it title two. Uh, so you can see the find by name now is title two. So if we was to drag these into there, it will remove the last find by name and update it with the new one. So you can see it's title two is what what that style is now. But if we drag it in this one, it will set it to this one. So that's quite cool. Um, most things in here, and this isn't just for styles. If you're looking for options for stuff. Try the right click because the right click's got its own contact menu for pretty much anything. So if I wanted to delete that now, I can delete it, I can move it up, down, I can move it to a different category if I had different categories up here. So let's just create a different category, call it new category. Uh, and you can see I've got my default one. Note as well, I can rename this default or I can delete the default as well. So if I wanted to move that to the new category, I can just move it over there. Uh, I can delete whole categories as well if I want. But now I've just got the default. Um, right, so now we've got these styles assigned to it. That is all it all it takes. We can now just apply the properties. So you'll see the tick box to the left of it, every field. And that is to um, to enable it so at the moment we're not touching the alignment or the best fit you know we're, we're only touching the color and the size um, so we can add a gradient straight from here we can give it a shadow and an outline uh, and obviously remove them straight from here Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the um, all the f features that you get from a text component. You're you're going to find there. Same with all of them, really. All the all the components. We do have a few more. Like we have title case here, so we can set it all to lowercase, or set it all to uppercase, or title case, which would be the first letter of each word, or first upper, which would just be the first letter. I'm going to put it to first title case, seeing as this is a title style we'll create new. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much covered the um, the style, if you like. But what we're going to do is create an input field because an input field's a bit more got a bit more going on than just a, a text. So what we've got here is uh, an input field. I'm going to actually delete that one, so we're not getting stuff in the way. And if I uh, create a pre-made, so you can see at the top here we've got an empty. That is obviously just an empty one, which we're going to do just in one second. But I'm going to show you with the input field first. Uh, let's just call it username and just assume that this is just a style for all the username input fields. So you can see here it already gives us our component, so we've got our input field there. Note as well that we can drag, like say if we wanted to create an input field, taking these values that we already have set over here, uh, what we can do is drag that input field into there, and it's going to ask us if we want to include the rec transform. Uh, I don't, because I don't want them all in the right same place. Uh, and then it's created our style there, and it's took the values into consideration. So it's give us our image. 
uh, our placeholder and our text. Uh, so here's the one that we didn't drag, so it hasn't got them properties. So we just want to put the foreign by name in it, and then if we apply and tick what we want to have applied, uh, what's going on here? Oh, right, that's the color there. That's why. So if we just apply that as well, that's, that's fine. Right, so what we can do here, you can see that it's getting the placeholder and stuff. So the placeholder, it's got a find by name. So you notice all these and it's path. Sorry, not a find by name, but a path. You can see that the path on the image and the input field is empty. And that's because the image and the input field component are on the route that we're finding. Yeah, it's got the find by name in it. But notice that the placeholder and the text haven't. So they need their path because they are childs. So you can see that the path is just placeholder. So we do that. Uh, and notice that that's automatically put in there for us because we created a pre-made input field. So let's go ahead and create um, it from empty. So this is our um, input field from empty. So you can see that all we get, this is just an empty style now. We've got our find by name. Uh, we've got an apply button, but obviously it's not going to apply anything. So to create this input field from scratch, we would need to create an input field component as well. If we want them values, we can just drag them in there like that. Uh, we would need an image. So as well, notice the rec transform allows drag and drop as well, uh, and the image and stuff. So that we have got a drag and drop video. So be sure to check that out and see exactly what you can drag and drop and where you can drag and drop it. Uh, and we would also need two text components for the uh, placeholder and text. So we want to rename one of these to placeholder. And you can see we've got some warnings here. So what these warnings are saying is we've got two of the same components referencing the same path. And in this case, they're referencing no path. So they're, they're referencing this game object. Well, that's not where the text is anyway. But the, that's not what the error is saying. The error is saying you've got two referencing the same path. So let's try and add a text to this. And you'll see that you can add two texts to the same game object. So it knows that this is an error. Uh, so basically what would happen here is we would update it with these values and then straight away update it with these so these would overwrite these so you know this one here is just pointless so um, to update the path the best way is just drag the path into it and that's the placeholder so the path basically if this this was within a game object uh, yeah, and then maybe even in another game object and then placeholder is in there then the path would be game object, game object one, and then the path. So just drag that path in there and it'll write it in there for you. You can obviously write it in by hand, but I mean, why would you do that when you can drag it, right? So as soon as you rename it or move its path, then just drag it in there to update it. Now, let's say as well that this input field had a tick and a cross with it. Uh, and we wanted to control that with the style as well. We would add it a tick. Uh, and just drag this component into it. So we could either add an image, but because we've already set the image and that on here, we can set the color on here and stuff. So because we've got it pre-made, let's just drag that in. And it'll take them components, see if we just give us a tick, the color, we're going to rename it to tick. <coughs> uh, yes, yeah, so that's renamed. Notice the path, we're getting an error again because we've got the image referencing the same path as the tick. So the ticks needs its path updating, basically. <coughs> right, so, yeah. So now we've, you know, let's just create um, a load of these input fields. say we want to update the colour 
uh, you see it all jump to the same place and that is because we are referencing the rec transform on the image you see they're all going to the same place so if we don't want them in the same place then we need to remove its rec transform Yeah, if we notice as well, I'll show you the rep transform with the tick. So if we open the tick up, grab a tick, grab the rep transform in there, uh, and then move the tick. Then when we apply it, it's going to always put the tick back where it should be. Uh, and UI Styles works great for layout, so check check the. Um, the runtime example out with layouts you can just use UI styles to have the user just completely change the theme of the game so you can supply them with a few themes and UI styles will sort it all out for you so that's took a good look into the styles I'm sure you'll figure it out figure it out if I forgot and if not I do have support so give us an email um, We've got custom components here, so this is good for text mesh pro and stuff, or even scripts that you've written yourself. Just any component, basically. So check out the video on that. Um, next, I'm going to do a tutorial on the color palette because the color palette's um, pretty cool. We can bring it up and we can set colors from it, and the it references it here. But I'm going to uh, save that for a new video. So I'll uh, see you in the next one, guys. Cheers for checking out your styles.